Hello friends, in today's video, we shall discuss about the constant elasticity of substitution production function. The constant elasticity of substitution or CES production function was put forward by Kenneth J. Arrow, Hollis B. Chenery, Bagicha Minhas and Robert Solo in 1961 in their famous paper, Capital Labor Substitution and Economic Efficiency. The general form of a CES production function can be expressed as Q is equal to A multiplied by alpha K raised to rho plus 1 minus alpha L raised to rho the whole raised to gamma by rho. Here, Q represents the total output, K is the capital L labor, A represents the efficiency parameter, alpha is the distribution parameter, rho is the substitution parameter and gamma by rho represents the returns to scale. We already know the general form of a cope douglas production function that is it can be written as Q is equal to A al alpha k beta or q is equal to a l alpha k raised to 1 minus alpha. There are some similarities between the Cope Douglas production function and the CES production function. First of all, both are linear homogeneous production functions. Secondly, the a in the Cope Douglas production function as well as in the CES production function represents the available technology or the efficiency parameter. The efficiency parameter indicates the state of technology used by the firm as well as the organizational aspects of production. Therefore, whenever there is a change in the technology, that change would lead to a shift in the production function. Next similarity between these two production functions is the distribution parameter represented by alpha. Though in the Cope douglas production function, we can see the distribution parameter being given in an exponential form. In CES production function, it is given as a coefficients of labor and capital. The distribution parameter tells us the factor shares of labor and capital in the total output and its value lies between 0 and 1. Suppose a value of alpha is equal to 0.6 then 1 minus alpha will be 0.4. It means that the share of capital in the total output is 60% whereas the share of labor in the total output is 40%. Then we have a new parameter which is the substitution parameter represented as rho in the CES production function which is not there in the Cope Douglas production function. So the substitution parameter determines the elasticity of substitution which can be calculated as sigma is equal to 1 by 1 minus rho. We know that the elasticity of substitution basically tells us the ease of substitutability between two factors. So, if we know the value of rho and if we plug in that value onto this equation, then we can find out the elasticity of substitution of the production function. We know the formula for calculating the elasticity of substitution which is percentage change in the k by l ratio divided by percentage change in the marginal rate of technical substitution. And also we know that MRTS of labor for capital is nothing but MPL by MPK which is equal to W by R. So, a change in MRTS means that a change in the factor prices would lead to change in the capital labor ratio. That is the elasticity of substitution which is represented by rho in this production function. So, if we know the value of rho, then we can substitute the value of rho into this equation in order to find out the value of elasticity of substitution and usually its value lies between 0 and infinity. In some textbooks, the substitution parameter is expressed as minus rho or minus theta. So, if the substitution parameter is given as a negative value, then the elasticity of substitution that is sigma will be equal to 1 by 1 plus rho or 1 by 1 plus theta. Whereas, if the substitution parameter is a positive value, then the elasticity of substitution can be calculated with the formula sigma is equal to 1 by 1 minus rho. And the last one is gamma by rho which represents returns to scale. It basically depends upon the value of gamma. Say if the value of gamma is equal to 1, then we have a constant returns to scale. If the value of gamma is greater than 1, then increasing returns to scale. And if the value of gamma is less than 1, then we have a decreasing returns to scale production function. So, the general form of a CES production function with a constant returns to scale can be written as Q is equal to A multiplied by alpha K raised to rho plus 1 minus alpha L raised to rho, the whole raised to 1 by rho. Since the value of gamma is equal to 1, this production function implies constant returns to scale. But how come this production function is having a constant elasticity of substitution. It basically means that for a CES production function, the value of the elasticity of substitution will be constant along an isoquant. But it is not necessary that it is equal to 1. It may be 1 or it can be any number between 0 and infinity. But when you take an isoquant, at any point on the isoquant, the elasticity of substitution will be constant. That is, if we are to represent this uh, production function graphically, then we will get an isoquant. 
वॉट एवर बी द शेप ऑफ द आइसोकोन अलॉन्ग द आइसोकोन इफ यू टेक एनी पॉइंट द इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ सब्सटीट्यूशन विल बी द सेम और इन अदर वर्ड द इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ सब्सटीट्यूशन इन एनी पॉइंट अलॉन्ग द आइसोकोन विल रिमेन कॉन्स्टेंट दैट इज वॉट इज मेन बाई अ प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन हैविंग अ कॉन्स्टेंट इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ सब्सटीट्यूशन सो दिस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन इज हैविंग एन इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ सब्सटीट्यूशन विच इज कॉन्स्टेंट एंड ऑल्सो सिंस द वैल्यू ऑफ गामा इज इक्वल टू वन दिस प्रोडक्शन फंक्शन ऑल्सो इम्प्लाइज कॉन्स्टेंट रिटर्न टू स्केल Now let's look at the properties of CES production function. The first property is that CES production function is a linear homogeneous function of degree 1 implying constant returns to scale. So it means that if all the inputs are increased by n fold then the output will also increase by n fold itself. We have already seen that a production function with the elasticity of substitution being constant and also implying constant returns to scale can be represented as q is equal to a alpha k raised to rho plus 1 minus alpha l raised to row the whole raised to 1 by row now we have to multiply this equation with a constant and then we have to see whether we can factor out the constant completely so if we multiply this equation with a constant say n then we get q star is equal to a alpha n multiplied by k the whole raised to row plus 1 minus alpha n multiplied by l the whole raised to row the whole raised to 1 by row now opening the brackets we get q star is equal to a alpha n raised to row k raised to row plus 1 minus alpha n raised to row l raised to row the whole raised to 1 by row now factoring out the constant we get q star is equal to n raised to row the whole raised to 1 by row multiplied by a alpha k raised to row plus 1 minus alpha l raised to row the whole raised to 1 by row here n raised to row is also raised to the power 1 by row that is why when we factor out the constant we have factored out n raised to row the whole raised to 1 by row now solving the exponents we get row multiplied by 1 by row is 1 so finally we get q star is equal to n raised to 1 a alpha k raised to rho plus 1 minus alpha l raised to rho the whole raised to 1 by rho here since the constant is raised to the power 1 we have proved that this production function implies a constant returns to scale the second property of a ces production function is that it is a generalized production function it means that ces production function is inclusive of the linear production function fixed proportions production function as well as the cope douglas production function let's say if rho is equal to One, then elasticity of substitution will be equal to infinity, which gives us a linear homogeneous production function. That is, we'll get a linear isoquant like this. We get such an isoquant in the case of perfect substitutes. It means that substitution of factors is easy. Now, if you take any point on this linear isoquant, we'll get the elasticity equal to infinity. So we can say that this linear homogeneous production function has a constant elasticity of substitution. Why? Because if you take any point on this linear Linear isoquant, we get the elasticity of substitution at all those points as infinity. Now, if rho is equal to zero, then we get sigma as one. So this clearly represents a Cope-Douglas production function represented by a convex isoquant. Here also, if you take any point on the isoquant, we'll get the elasticity as one. So a Cope-Douglas production function is also having a constant elasticity of substitution. Again, if rho is equal to infinity, then the value of sigma will be equal to zero. Which gives us a Leontief type of production function represented by an L-shaped isoquant. We can see such an isoquant in the case of perfect complements. It simply shows that there is zero substitutability between the factors. Now, suppose if the elasticity is equal to five, then we get an isoquant shaped something like this. That is, from a linear isoquant, it has slowly started to show convex properties. Now, suppose if the elasticity of substitution is equal to point one, then we get an isoquant shaped like this. Here Here we can see that from a convex isoquant, the isoquant is becoming more of L shape. So here we can see that as the value of the elasticity of substitution changes, we get isoquants of different shapes. And if you take any isoquant, then all the points along that isoquant will be constant. So all these isoquants represents a constant elasticity of substitution production function. So here we have isoquants with different curvature, and if you take any isoquant, say the isoquant where the elasticity is equal to point one, then any point along that isoquant will have a constant elasticity or the same elasticity that is point one itself. So that isoquant is also a CES production function. Similar is the case with all these isoquants. That is why a CES production function is termed as a generalized production function. If you like the video do subscribe to my channel and share the videos to maximum thank you